What's going on guys, we're back with a brand new video, and today we're going to be talking about another NBA rumor, and this rumor is about the possibility of Isaiah Thomas signing with the Los Angeles Lakers and returning there. So if you didn't know, Los or I mean, Isaiah Thomas played for the Los Angeles Lakers after he was on the Cavaliers. Uh, if you didn't know, Isaiah Thomas was traded for Kyrie Irving from the Celtics to the Cavaliers, and then he was traded for Larry Nance Jr. and Jordan Clarkson, I believe, are the two, to the Lakers, and the Cavaliers got back the two players I just said. Uh, and he actually wore two numbers, different numbers. He wore this number seven, as you can see here, and then he also wore number three. I don't know why. He was only there for, I think, one season, half a season, something like that. He wasn't there very long, but he still wore two numbers for some reason. I don't know. There's Maybe there's some significance or maybe not, uh, but he hasn't played a game in over a year now, that's for sure, Isaiah Thomas hasn't, because after the Lakers days were over, I remember when he was on the Lakers, first of all, before we get into that, uh, I remember when he was on the Lakers, he said he felt like he got his powers back, and I was hoping that Isaiah Thomas was back, uh, but he was not. Okay, one thing I want to point out about this picture is who would have thought that the the most like the player that's still on the Lakers to this day wasn't any of the three guys on the left. It was KCP that's still on the Lakers today. That's crazy. You wouldn't think Lonzo Ball, who was supposed to be a Hall of Fame player, as Magic Johnson said, or Isaiah Thomas, who was like a MVP candidate, or Brooke Lopez, former All-Star. Like that's kind of weird that uh, KCP was the last one, or the only one that is still on the Lakers to this day. Uh, and then after his Lakers days, he ended up on the Denver Nuggets for a season way back in the bench, and then he was with the Wizards, and that's the most recent team he has played for, played for, so that's a big part of it. Uh, and he, I thought he played well. He was a starting point guard because John Wall was hurt, and I thought he played really well uh, as probably a backup point guard. I thought he was still a solid player. And then it just all went away. It just all ended really, really fast. He got traded to the Clippers and waived. And no one has signed him since. And it was just one of the, he has had one of the most roller coaster careers I've ever seen in my life. 60th pick in the draft that's the last pick of the draft goes to the kings and Suns, and he's pretty solid but he doesn't do anything crazy there gets traded to the celtics and just becomes this absolute phenomenal nba player and does everything for the for the celtics does everything plays through his sister's death in the nba playoffs it goes off and just plays incredible and they trade him away for Kyrie Irving just like he trade him away like he's an NBA 2k player on my league emotions are a real thing and that was that made me lose respect for Celtics the Celtics organization and I think it did for a lot of other people as well uh and then once he got out of the league over a year ago now. I think it's been over a year. Which, yeah, it definitely has been because the trade deadline's over and he got traded before he got waived. So, yeah, that's just too bad for him. I hope he gets back in the league. I think he'll get another chance. I can't imagine that he's just done. Uh, I thought the Bucks would sign him, but the, they ended up getting Jeff Teague and Austin Rivers uh, is assumed to go there. I don't know why that still hasn't make, become official. But uh, Austin Rivers is really widely considered to go there. Now, I don't think that the Bucks have any reason at all to sign Thomas. But if you look at NBA rosters, there is still like, I think, 20 open roster spots throughout the league. And you can't tell me that he's not one of the best 20 free agents. He just, he's, he definitely is. 
like I could not imagine him not getting signed this season before like the April whatever date it's pretty soon like a week or two maybe three probably not three probably like two weeks until you have to sign your players and lock them up so that they're eligible to play for the playoffs uh so i see him getting signed and here's what i'm saying i know the lakers need a three and d guy i know i'm gonna get some comments about that Th those just aren't out there they just aren't Otto porter jr doesn't sound like he's gonna get bought out and it really doesn't feel like the lakers have too many options they might just have to settle and yes I Isaiah Thomas really is, doesn't meet like the most needed position for them because they have Dennis Schroeder who can play point guard, LeBron James can play point guard, Alex Caruso can play point guard, Talon Horton Tucker can play point guard, but really Dennis Schroeder and LeBron James are the two players that would play point guard because the Lakers like to run Talon Horton Tucker and uh, Alex Caruso more at shooting guards. Which I don't know about that, but they that's what the Lakers like to do more. So I could see this happening. I know defensively he's just not there. But if you want to play him a little bit, he could come and give you a good scoring punch off the bench. Uh, maybe you like other players. Let me know other players that you think would be good for the Lakers. But I feel like this would be if you were going to settle for someone. Because there's no way they're not signing someone to that last contract or that last roster spot if you were going to settle for anyone that was just like not what you needed like if you were gonna let's say demarcus cousins 10 day ends and they're like okay let's just get demarcus cousins that's not it or let's say they go back to quinn cook they're like okay let's just bring quinn cook back for the ride i say you go out there and take a tiny risk potentially big reward signing in Isaiah Thomas. I think that is the way to go. Uh, that's what I would want to do uh, if I were the Lakers. Defensively, there's no upside. Quinn Cook, defensively, there's no upside. Yeah, there's chemistry in the locker room upside. But I feel like they might have to make a risk here. They really might have to. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's just be for a year. They only would pay him like $900,000, like it's less than a million dollar contract that they can offer him. And thanks to Andre Drummond, they are able to offer someone like 900,000 because Andre Drummond is only on like a $700,000 contract, which is just unheard of. That's just a tiny, tiny contract. Not even like two way guys get that some off contracts. Usually two way guys usually get paid even more than that, which is crazy. Uh, but I'd like to see an Isaiah Thomas Lakers reunion. Hopefully he can come out here, play good, and maybe even get a ring and end his career off like that if he wants it to be over. I don't know if he wants it to be over or not. Uh, I just find it so surprising that no one's been like, AID, hey, come play for us. Like, even a bad team. I don't understand. Why wouldn't you take this low risk, low risk, high reward? There might be something going on behind the scenes that we just don't know about. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you guys later. Don't forget to comment down below and subscribe. Peace.